This is module 10 of the HACCP Intermediate Course, and here we'll be looking at critical limits, target levels, and tolerances. Uh, just a few uh, bits of jargon to get your head around, and I'll be giving the definitions and explaining in more detail throughout this module. So the aim of this unit is to look at how to establish critical limits. The learning outcomes by the end of this unit, delegates will be able to define critical limit target level, tolerance and deviation. We'll be establishing critical limits and target levels for CCPs and providing examples of critical limits and target levels. So establishing critical limits. First of all, let's have a look at some definitions. A critical limit is the value of a monitored action which separates acceptable from the unacceptable. Deviation is failure to meet a critical limit. Target level is the predetermined value for the control measure which will eliminate or control the hazard at a control point or buffer zone. This is the level at which we want to aim for. This is the ideal target. The tolerance is the specified degree of latitude for a control measure which, if exceeded, requires immediate corrective action. So let's have a look at establishing critical limits and the criteria used. Now I'm going to give an example of uh, refrigeration temperature. So let's just put down some figures first of all. If we look at the critical limit as being 8 degrees C, um, in other words that's the maximum that we want to allow our fridges to hit. Um, one of the main reasons is the UK food safety legislation states that um, no industrial fridges should be above eight, should run be above eight degrees Celsius anyway. But our target level, our target temperature, is five degrees C. Oh no, not the best. Obviously, the the, the cooler you can get your fridge, um, preferably under three degrees C, the better. But for this as an example, we're looking at the target level being five degrees C. The critical limit is 8 degrees C, so that's the absolute maximum before the alarm bells start ringing. The difference between the two, between the target and the critical limit, is the tolerance. So we're allowing ourselves 3 degrees of tolerance, if you like, the difference, before the alarm bells start ringing. 9 degrees Celsius, as you can see from the top graphic, is unacceptable and it's gone too far. Uh, when it's gone too far, we call that a deviation, and uh, because that's unacceptable, then things have gone out of control. We really need to action around about 7 degrees Celsius, which is the first graphic. Uh, we're looking at a target level of 5. Uh, as soon as it goes to 7 degrees Celsius, anyway, between 5 and 7, then really we need to take action. We don't wait until it gets to 8 degrees C or in fact a 9 degree C, we need to take action well before then. So let's have a look at uh, cooking temperature. 
uh, where we're looking at the critical limit being 75, the target being 78. So our target level um, okay, is a bit uh, a bit too high as, as far as cooking food with a, with a good quality output is concerned, but uh, from a food safety point of view, let's have a target level of 78 degrees Celsius. Now, the critical limit is 75 degrees Celsius. So 75 is not, it's, it's a bit like the reverse of the fridge. It's, it's not high enough. So the difference between the target and the critical limit is the tolerance of 3 degrees C. So we've got 3 degrees to play around with, basically. We've got a tolerance, a range of 3 degrees C before the alarm bells start ringing. But again, with, with cooking, is is not as critical as... A refrigerator, because once a refrigerator goes above a certain temperature, like 90 degrees C, for example, then we have to look at disposing of the food products. With cooking temperature, we just heat the food until it does reach the target level. We don't have to dispose of the item because we are going to cook it until it reaches our target level. And the action level is 76 degrees C, but certainly we need to take action. Um, well before then. So the variables, for example, uh, we could have a critical limit of 7 degrees C. We could have a target level of 4 degrees C. Again, perhaps a little bit too high because E. coli can and has been proved to grow at 4 degrees C in the fridge. And uh, as you may not be aware, when E. coli grows, it does produce toxin. Uh, so that's quite a low temperature. Under 3 degrees C, E. coli doesn't grow, so it wouldn't produce a toxin. I know it would probably take a long time to develop uh, a toxin and grow to sufficient numbers, but the risk is still there. So try to keep your fridges below 3 degrees C. As close as you can to 1 degree C without the produce actually freezing. Uh, cooking temperatures, again we've got a critical limit there, 76 and target level of 79, so 1 degree higher. Again, as far as uh, UK cooking is concerned, uh, a very high temperature where a lot of quality would, uh, would dissipate at those temperatures. So let's have a look at the generic flow diagram for Catrin. Uh, I put the legend there, CCP, uh, Critical Control Point Genetic Hazards, CMNS, Contamination, Multiplication, Survival. And always check the temperatures with a disinfected electronic probe thermometer. So, this is the first half, if you like, of a flow diagram for catering. Uh, I try to cover as many points or specs as possible. Now, the main protocol for flow diagrams is that each process uh, is differentiated, uh, usually by uh, a box or a circle. For example, purchase is surrounded by a rectangular box. Uh, the other protocol is that the arrows should be in place to show the direction of the process. Uh, in this circumstance, it's gone from purchase to delivery to storage. So the red arrows are showing us the direction of the process. Uh, where it goes from top to bottom, it could also go from left to right as well, as with storage going to dry, chilled or frozen. So we got the food product covered in uh, after purchase. It's been delivered. It's been put into storage. Uh, that could be dry storage, chill storage or frozen or it could be going straight from storage to preparation. If it's going into dry, chilled or frozen storage, if it's in frozen storage, it could be thawed before it's prepared. And then after preparation, it could be served cold. Now that is the first critical control point uh, in this half of the flow diagram. There are no other critical control points thus far. Uh, really, a critical control point is the last line of defense. Is the stage at which, after the critical control point, it goes to the customer and then it's out of our control. So it's the last line of defense. So let's have a look at some of the um, labels where C tells us that contamination can occur in purchase, multiplication can occur during delivery, storage, and preparation, and also thawing because HEM is, HEM is related to uh, temperature control, or temperature abuse. Also, the other thing that's not mentioned on there is contamination really and truly can occur at any stage in the process. So that can occur 
doing delivery storage preparation as with serving cold. Let's have a look at some more detail that you can put on the flow diagram which shows that if somebody picks this up like an environmental health officer they can quite easily follow the process steps. So the extra labels are put on there uh, purchase from approved suppliers uh, delivery should be at less than 5 or less than minus 18 degrees C if it's chilled or frozen time to unload from delivery less than 10 minutes uh, storage, make sure you've got a good stock rotation system, like a first in, first out. Then again, go over to the right hand side under dry, chilled or frozen. With chilled, uh, the fridges should be less than 5 degrees C. Like I said, as close as you can to 1 degree C, but the products freeze in. Frozen, less than minus 18 degrees C. Thawing, at less than 10 degrees C. Uh, refrigerate or cook immediately when thawed. Uh, during preparation, less than one hour for the food at ambient temperature, which means room temperature, when you're actually preparing it. So let's go down to the bottom part of the genetic flow diagram. And this is where we're going to start to heat the product and serve the product hot, etc. So, again following the arrows, uh, the, the product now, let's just go, uh, goes to cooking. Uh, after cooking, it could be prepared further. It could then be hot, held and served, uh, like in a carvey situation. Or from cooking, uh, it could be served hot straight away. After cooking, it could be prepared even further and cooled. Plus, we're going to use uh, a meat product uh, as a salad or as, as some sort of um, cold uh, meat product. From cooling, then it goes into storage. Uh, a chilled. Uh, from there, it could go to a display cabinet and held cold before the serve, or it could be straight from storage to being served cold, or it could be going from storage to being reheated and served. And don't forget, we only reheat a product once, and it's actually got a last stage in the process: the use of leftovers uh, from chilled. So let's put some labels on there, and as you can see, contamination and multiplication can occur at each step. Contamination, multiplication and survival can occur during cooking and reheating and serving. And again, to put additional information on, uh, we can serve hot, less than 15 minutes, so as soon as possible. Cooking to greater than 75 degrees C. Preparation, uh, going down through the, the arrows, less than 30 minutes at ambient temperature. Uh, cooling, uh, different methods of cooling. Probably the safest and best way is to use a blast chiller. that can reduce the temperature to less than 5 degrees C within 90 minutes. Uh, but there are other systems like the uh, American system, the Camden system, uh, one of which you can reduce it to less than 10 degrees C within 4 hours. Then we can display cold and serve at less than 5 degrees C. And we've got serve cold uh, within 15 minutes, less than 15 minutes. We've got under storage, we've got stock rotation, first in, first out. Uh, reheat and serve. When you reheat, is the same as cooking, where we are cooking or reheating to 75 degrees Celsius. And look at all the critical control points. Uh, from my definition, a critical control point is the last line of defense before it's served to the customer. So to the right of each CCP, that's then being served to the customer. So once it gets the customer's out of our control. So that's why we call it a critical control point. So the key points of that section, we looked at the critical limit, target level and tolerance. Critical limits and target levels for CCPs. Examples of critical limits and target levels. Thank you for watching our video. Please take a moment to visit our website by clicking on the link below. We'll see you there.